Well, hello and welcome to This Week in Gwent, a weekly show in which we talk everything Gwent. I am joined by the Salty Captain. Hello. How are you doing? Greeting of the day. Uh, thanks so much, Burza, for having me on. And again, uh, a shout out to all of you beautiful oxygen thieves out there in the chat <laughs> lurking. We love to have you. Um, super appreciate being on here uh, and getting to lead into uh, Monday's patch. Yeah, exactly. That's that's going to be the big thing uh, on Monday. We will have the developer uh, video launching. And after that, we will have the patch notes and the patch happens on Tuesday as always. So good Looking stuff on that. It. Yeah, can't wait for it. Um, hopefully uh, this will somehow shift our community sentiment to a better place, uh, especially maybe with some changes to Arendite coming. Um, so I'm really happy about that. Um, really, to happy, really happy to have you on, uh, first of all, most of all. Uh, thank you for uh, actually hitting me up to be on Twig. I love when people actually come forth and say like, I wanna be on Twig, I'm like, yes. I don't need to sit like, you know, and think like, hmm, who should I have on this week? And so, yeah, if anyone watching wants to be on Twig, hit me up. It's very easy. Write to me on Twitter, Discord, wherever you want. Uh, I would be happy to have you if you're a Gwen content creator. And um, yeah, and also you, you just became partner, right? I did. Um, super Congrats. Super exciting times. Yeah, I, uh, I'm really, it's one of those things where when I first started this, and I know that we'll we'll get into it, but I, I never... I never thought it was going to be anything more than me hanging out with some friends and having yeah. a good time and kind of talking about the game, other games that we might play. And, um, and it's between team Creve being kind enough to take me on, uh, yeah, they're awesome. The Gwen community in general, it's been great to just be uplifted and be able to, to reach out to that many more people and have so, so much fun with it. So thanks for, again, thanks for having me. Man, it's a, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Thank you for agreeing to be on. And uh, as you know, the format is very simple. We will first go through the news. Um, there's really like just one item in the news because there was nothing really uh, happening uh, throughout this week since we're preparing for patch day. And uh, I think we have like two community news. So one spoiler for, for the red news is of course that we will have developer update 10.6. This is a thumbnail for the video. So uh, looking at the background, this is kind of a leak. You might expect some change to the card that you're seeing, um, which is gonna be quite good. So a uh, fresh leak for everyone watching. And yeah, this is the only item for, for red news this time. As for community news, a uh, new episode of Flurza from a uh, previous week, the one about handling feedback. I uh, highly encourage you to, to check it out if you have any uh, questions, how um, feedback works, how feedback should be taken into account, how you should maybe pass on feedback to developers or others. Um, highly encouraged to check it out. And this week, um, today, we will have another episode launch, which is uh, talking about Jank decks. So uh, if you don't know what Jank is, uh, check them out. Um, um, I like piloting crappy decks from time to time, um, and there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it, trust me. And Gwent League Summer Season, um, this is something new. You can check it out. There, it's a pretty cool tournament. You can sign up. It starts this weekend, so there's not a lot of time. But if you head up their Discord, uh, you can sign up there and check it out for yourself. That's it. That's it. Easy. Love to see it. Love to see it. Uh, do you like jank decks or no? Do you just do you or do you just don't mind playing like something less optimal, but maybe, you know, if it goes, it goes hard. <laughs> I mean, I, I am such, my favorite thing and the thing that, that really drew me to Gwent was the interactions. Mm -hmm. So for me, yeah, I mean, I am fine with, um, you know, our, our Creep teammate Fuchsia Briefs will do this where uh, he'll create a deck and he'll play it on ladder for 15 games to get two games out of it where the, the interaction works uh, yeah. as intended. And when it does, it feels so good. Um, with the <laughs> I love that. Changes that you all, oh, it's my favorite, right? And with the sale changes that you all made, probably my favorite thing that's happened um, for me and Gwent the last few months was uh, I played Land of a Thousand Fables with Sahil and did all of that. But my yeah. intent was I had, I got Ryogan in the graveyard hanging out. <laughs> and second to last play, I transformed my Sahil into a Siana, that 50 50. Yeah. And then I played Fakusha twice. Uh, on deploy, so I was able to bring uh, Arnulf out of the graveyard and then and get all that rain, and then I bring Ryogan out of the graveyard to to proc all the rain at once. I was the happiest panda in the world. I'm like <laughs> a little kid at Christmas. There's a clip of it on my on uh, on my page where I'm just 
I'm just like, I'm just cheering like a child. And it's, it's so fun because, um, you know, winning and competing at the higher levels, uh, there's a lot of people that enjoy doing that. There's a lot of people that play casually. There's a, some people that only like to play like seasonally or with friends, but those interactions are what I think keep bringing us back. So a hundred percent. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh, when did you, when did you join Gwent? Like when did you find the game? Uh, first of all, ah, so, um, so I played all of the Witcher games. Okay. And so of course my Respect. first exposure to Gwent. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, oh, I was, I was in it from the beginning because I just said, this is, this is too fun not to do. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the first, um, the first interaction that I had outside of, uh, in the Witcher games with Gwent, with the Gwent standalone, uh, was literally like six, eight weeks before, uh, COVID lockdown started here in okay. the States. So, uh, early, it was March, February, March of 2020. And it, uh, and so I'd picked up the game at random because a friend of mine did. And then, a, you know, obviously, like I said, a couple months later, we're in the midst of, you know, everybody's working from home. Nobody's leaving the house for essentials. So my friends and I started reaching out to each other and we said, mm -hmm. Hey, like, remember back in the day we would use, uh, especially like when we were in college and everybody kind of went their separate ways, we would use video games as a way to stay in touch. Yeah. It's, it's a, a good way. Shared, yeah. Yeah. It's a common shared experience. It's a shared community. Um, everyone's got their own different things going on because they're living in different places, different mm -hmm. majors, but we have a single thread that kind of is something we can be consistent links with. you together. Right. It's exactly right. And so I just kind of, it just kind of grew from there and, uh, and we were all playing together and those fun interactions, like we talked about, we'd ping each other clips of different stuff, which is why a lot of us got onto Twitch. And then finally, because, uh, you know, I casted sports in the past and been, uh, done color, color commentating and uh, play by play. Some of my friends were like, Hey, like, this would be super fun to yeah. listen to you ramble on like a clown on uh, on stream. Why don't you get into it? And that's oh, what nice! Here. So they, they they motivated you to pretty much check it out and, and do it. Yeah, and 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 especially because I um I was there, I'm do I do a lot of philanthropy and volunteer work um, mm -hmm. on the side, and my worlds started to kind of mesh together. I started to have different things start to bleed into each other. Hey, I saw that you did this, or, you know, I'd have people from uh film therapic organizations be like, Oh, like, you know, one, there's a person that works with me at um, pause for life here mm -hmm. in town, uh, uh, an animal rescue. Yeah. That said, Hey, did I hear you say you play Gwent? <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah. And they're like, you know, I actually play Gwent and I was like, Oh, that's really cool. That's awesome. That's amazing. So yeah. So as it, everything started to bleed together, I was like, you know, it might be a lot of fun to, to stream and, uh, and be able to interact with the community real time. And it's really awesome because, uh, you mentioned that you do most of this stuff for, for charity, right? The, the, all the proceeds that that's you right. do from your streams go straight to, to charity. That's really amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm privileged enough that I know some people stream for, uh, some, some people stream for a job, some people stream mm -hmm. as a, as a secondary income. Uh, I know that I'm in a really lucky and privileged position to be able to stream because it's fun. And the second it stops being fun, I won't do it anymore. Okay. So as a result, uh, what I do is each month, uh, I do a live donation stream mm -hmm. where, uh, I show everybody exactly what, uh, I made from all of the various proceeds from Twitch. Uh, and then we live. Uh, I've got a couple charities uh, that we put up on screen that I've vetted through Charity Watch um, and uh, netcharity.org. And mm -hmm. we go through and everybody votes for it. And then I match those funds dollar for dollar and we donate that live on stream. That's uh, amazing. So this, past, uh, this past weekend when we did our charity stream, um, we were able to buy um, a handful of water pumps through uh, Water for South Sudan. Um, wow. Through that organization. And uh, that's all because of the generosity of uh, the Gwent community. So it's something we do every month and it's something I'm lucky to do. That's amazing. That's amazing. And it's really nice to see like, you know, you started with this passion for, for streaming and that you're taking this and actually, you know, investing it into giving back to people who are less fortunate. It's just, it's just freaking amazing. Well, the Gwent community has been amazing with the aid for Ukraine, mm -hmm. um, with other charity events. So many streamers. The most valuable yeah. thing for for the streamers is uh, is their time. For yeah. any content creator, it's their time. Um, and for them to be able to share that in the tournaments, in the events, people who aren't streaming Gwent as much now, people that consistently are streaming, some people came back yeah. uh, to be able to jo join some of those events. So you guys really set the... Uh, uh, can. Did you just hear the uh, follow notification that I got? No. 
Oh, thank God. <laughs> um, I, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't tamper off my, uh, my audio setting. So it just exploded in my yeah. eardrums. And I was like, I was like, God, I hope no, I didn't, didn't, didn't go through his hearing. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, end of the day, it's, uh, it's something you guys have set the tone for other streamers have set the tone for. So I'm, I'm just glad to be a part of that. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I think whenever there is a possibility to give back, I think streaming is the best way to kind of, uh, show your, like show your presence. That's one thing. And the other thing is actually convert that presence into doing something good and helping out. Like for us, it's easier because we're behind the logo of CDPR. So as a company, we try to do a lot of charity streams for, for different causes. And it's always good to, you know, use this kind of online persona that we've kind of managed to accumulate around us and use it for good. So, um, yeah, I totally, totally get that. And I respect that, but yeah, it's always, it's always hard because as a, as a content creator streamer, you need to kind of also think about like, what do I want to do? Like, what should I, what kind of should be my avenue that I go through uh, when it comes to, should I be doing this more for myself? Should I be doing this for others? Should I be giving back to the community? But I also feel like something that you highlighted, which is important here is that the Gwen community is pretty much open when it comes to helping others out. And also, um, we've seen a lot of people starting to stream, um, you know, Gwent and the community, you know, like following plus help from them has been very, very good. And it comes to like simple stuff, like, you know, helping set up, I don't know, donations or setting up Nightbot or, or other stuff and getting actually mods uh, for your channel. Like anyone from this community is always, you know, happy to help and jump on and kind of, you know, everybody's kind of lifting each other, each other together, which is, which is amazing. And that's, and that's the thing is, is, and something that, you know, my time in the military really taught me is everyone's burden and everyone's struggle is unique to them. Yeah. And playing this, you know, playing this comparative game of trying to say like, oh, you know, my struggle is more or less than someone else's and stuff. It just, do it doesn't work and it's not helpful. Yeah. And, and I say that because um, some people say, oh, this is just a game. And they're right. It is a game, True. but it's a game that, for example, that the development team, the leadership team at CDPR, the individual contributors have spent hundreds of thousands of hours on <laughs> over half a decade of your lives. Finally, finally um, someone sees that. <laughs> it just, it just, it's, it's true because if you've never built something from the ground up, if you've yeah. never built something with your hands, it's hard to appreciate the love and care that goes into that. And that is not to say that mm -hmm. criticisms and critique and feedback are not welcome, appreciated and useful. It's just a comment. Yeah. Um, and in the same way, it's it's very easy maybe for somebody to say, uh, you know, we and I bring up my service because we, you know, sometimes in especially in the States and I know from a lot of the other countries that I've been to and have interacted with veterans, sometimes there's this interesting dynamic that happens where it's like, oh, no, 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 you know, um, you know, Salty, you've served. So, you know, yeah. you understand. I say, no, it's a job. Yeah. And and the stakes may be different in different jobs, but it's a job. It's and it's it's a thing. And the, the reason I'm calling all of this out is just that at the end of it, th whatever we can do to help lift each other up is what we should do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The measure of our dedication is what we're willing to do when maybe it's a little bit hard or when it's something that we're not, uh, that's not easy. Yeah. So that's why, you know, HK is a, is a member of my, um, uh, is a member of uh, Team Creeb with me and Ulcroy. Uh, mm -hmm. They reminded me that the Gwen community got together and literally saved uh, a dog's life. They yeah. literally yeah. helped. That was amazing. Uh, help. That's incredible, right? Yeah. That's a group of, of essentially strangers in a digital space getting together and saying, you, this is a member of your family. You view this dog as, as someone that's part of your life. And I know that from my animals. Oh my God. Like I would, <laughs> I would be crushed. I would be crushed Same. if something happened in Same. mine. Same. Um, and the, the, the community uplifted. So that's why this comparison of like, oh, it's just a game or it's just, that's it's much helpful. more than that. It's helpful is taking care of each other. I mean, the game is the common ground that we kind of all share because we all play the game. We all enjoy the game and the community around it. But actually, you know, there is there is different ways and kind of options that we can we can take when it comes to what we good like what we do with this, right? And thanks to right. like thanks to knowing so many people from different walks of life and from different parts of the world, we're able to create just just amazing stuff and have this awesome like wholesome community. Hundred percent. And again, that's 
you know, criticisms and critique and feedback are what they are, and that's fine. And yeah. if, you know, if we're not willing to take them, then we're not doing our jobs. Um, but that also doesn't mean that we can't have a primary focus and a goal of just having fun and, and lifting each other up, especially when people are in a position of need. Yeah. Perfectly, perfectly said. Um, so we know how you joined uh, the Gwent clan. How? What about um, playing like The Witcher? Uh, did you play like Witcher Two or Witcher One, or was it just Witcher Three? All how was them. your experience? All of them. Okay, All but them. was it like from um, been, the beginning or or yeah? Yeah. I, so so this is a shout out to uh, to any of my friends who uh, or any of the my my fellow war room chat friends who have been around the game long enough. And I know that you have as well. Yeah. I've been around gaming long enough. <laughs> we were doing Justin TV and Twitch TV back in the day by going to a friend's house and watching them play a game that maybe nice. we didn't have. So right? OG. Like <laughs> the super OG, right? I'm talking like, you know, Diablo one, Baldur's Gate, two D RPGs. Like you, know, nice. you, go, you go down the rabbit hole. I remember when, um, you know, growing up, um, you know, my mom raised all of my brothers and I by herself. We didn't have a lot of money. My first Twitch was me going to my friend's house after school and watching him play um, bootleg Japanese RPGs that were ported that that had like busted subtitles um, because they were never meant to be you yeah. know, brought to America. Perfect. And just being fascinated by by those kind of games and just watching him play for hours. Um because it's just it's a fun vicarious experience. It's watch it's it's the the human interaction piece, but it's also watching somebody else play a movie. Yeah, and it was it was fun. It was a hell of a good time. And then, um, you know, when I got to college, there was you know everybody had um, you know at the time PS3 and PS4 was getting ready to launch mm -hmm. and Xbox and stuff. We still had people playing N64. We had people playing Mario uh, Kart, the best, and original <laughs> Smash Bros. and Mario Golf. Yeah. Admittedly, we'd have a couple of drinks and play uh, play Mario Kart. Um, the best, in a best lot of thing to do. That's that's a lot of whenever we have like a party. That's that's the go to yep. game. Yeah. Because because you can pick it up and you can play it however you want. Yeah. Um. So it, it like it, you know there's 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 three buttons there's five total controls it makes it too easy right you can hand the control to yeah. anybody and be like just press a and, yeah and, and just uh, go you know, <laughs> and so uh and admittedly we uh we may have also had uh had some drinks uh while we were doing that and in a lot of countries it's illegal to uh to drink and drive so of course we would never play mario kart and uh and, drink <laughs> and, and, and play mario kart but um that's that that's a long way around to bringing me to the witcher is i got sucked in very early on into um, RPGs and storytelling and mm -hmm. games that tell a story. Mm -hmm. And so for me, when, uh, when I'd seen, uh, the, when the first Witcher come out and a friend of mine who play who had played it was like, Hey, like the UI is a little janky, <laughs> um, you know, but he's like, there's a really neat story behind here and a, and a neat universe that I think you'd be interested in. And I got hooked. And then of course, I nice. mean, the, the, the DLC for Witcher three, you know, like, I mean, blood and wine was just, I mean, it's tops. It's yeah. So for me also my favorite one, yeah. my favorite one, Hands like down. always, because, um, I feel like in that one, we kind of showed how much we've grown in terms of like the visuals, the art style, but also like word, word building and stuff like that from, um, you know, the, the base game and it kind of showed you that there, there were a lot of things that, that changed there. And also the visual style, uh, was, was much different because we went from kind of, you know, dark and gritty to this wow. beautiful two song where everything is, you know, thriving and blooming a little bit of mix of like Southern France mixed in with a little bit of Italy in it. And the, the, you know, the wine yards and all that, that was just, it was incredible to actually like get to see it behind the scenes because that was the time where I joined the company and actually see it being developed and see the concept art for the characters. Uh, yeah, the only thing I had to watch out for is spoilers because story spoilers were like everywhere, but uh, that was a really cool 100%. one. And I, I, was, uh, I was actually, um, I was in service at the time and, uh, and I wasn't, I wasn't uh, here in the States. So when Witcher 3 came out, I was way behind the power curve. But mm -hmm. the upside was that by the time that I got back to it, the DLC was ready. So I was able to play Witcher 3, start to finish nice. like, as as that complete story. And it was it was so great. And that's where I'm actually uh two weeks ago, I finally got it through my backlog. I've also started Cyberpunk. Ooh, um, so nice. Streaming between obviously those of us who like video games know that Diablo Immortal launched yesterday yeah. um the uh, the PC beta. Yep. You better believe that uh, when the early to mobile came out, 
I was jamming that thing till my phone turned, <laughs> became a thousand degrees. My phone was a thousand degrees in my hand. Yeah, so, perfect. So did that. So we're going to be, you know, obviously there, there's another, another great story. Um, and so I'm excited to get into the cyberpunk story. Uh, I'm excited to, I was excited to hear Deckard, Deckard Kane's voice again in Diablo. Yeah. So stuff I love, but, but the, but hearts and wine is always going to have a place for me. I mean, it's just so good. It's so good. I mean, how could you not be yep. happy about it? I mean, blood and wine will always be uh, number one for me also, but I know a lot of people kind of go towards like hearts of stone because the story aspect there is like very, very strong. And um, I think it's more linear when it comes to like the the whole storytelling because I feel like in Blood and Wine, you kind of have things open up a little bit and you kind of can choose your own trajectory where you want to go and what you want to do. Nice. Blood and Wine, out of, out of the two, Blood and Wine's definitely tops for me too. Yeah. And, and like you said, also the, the visual aesthetic, like you, exactly what you said, the, the Portugal, Spain meets Italy. It's yeah. just, I, I love that vibe. It's a mix of a little bit of everything kind of, uh, yeah, the good weather also, which is, which is the most important thing there. Like you're not, you 100%. know, in, in rainy, snowy Skellige where it's just, uh, terrible. Although it has its, you know, it has its own thing. Like Skellige is good to like play, play it in the, in the winter time. Um, are you also this type of gamer that uh, plays games depending on, uh, the time of the year? Like if it's summer, you like a summer game. And if it's like winter, you want a winter game. You know, it's funny you say that. I tend to play a lot of uh, a lot more sports games and even FPSs and stuff in the summer when I've got the windows open and, you know, and it, it has that vibe to it. And like you said, I, I, I didn't think of it until you just said it, but you're right. I tend to want to RPG hunker down in the winter. I get myself a nice big bowl of soup, like an entire loaf of bread or, and a block of cheese because I'm a monster like that. And just not <laughs> Respect. From my cat. No, it's, it's tough. I'm a gym rat, but I admit that I've gone three, four, six, 10 days without really leaving because I'm just, I'm, I'm in a game and I'm like, and they're like, Oh, it's 70 hours challenge accepted. <laughs> so I'm, I'm there for it. hundred percent. Perfect. Perfect. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, if you, if you mix it up and you have, you know, you have the time where you do cardio and you do like all your gyms, gym related stuff, uh, and you, you like hunker down, take a couple of weeks and actually get into training properly. It's all good. But then you also have, you know, the time where you can, you know, kind of let yourself go a little bit and, and enjoy kind of, you know, the, the good stuff, right? The good food and lots of it. And also if you train a lot, you're able to eat a lot. So, you know, that's, that's I read always that a plus. Somewhere and that Maybe that helps explain why I'd eat an entire pizza in one sitting. I'll justify it by saying that I did leg day yesterday. That's what I'll, that's what I'll I have. The, I have the same thing. And I just bike like a hundred kilometers in the morning, right? <laughs> I've, yes, I've seen this. I've seen that you, uh, you bike further than a lot of people will be willing to drive. That's incredible. I actually make more kilometers on my bike than I do on my car, especially with the gas prices. Now I the, totally no, no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, I can't, uh, it's, there's a there's a small niche sub community in the Gwen community of um of gym rats and people who like to like suffer. Yeah. Um and uh and I see Fox Bride is actually in here too. And he's um he, uh, he's current he did he just did a train up for uh, Murph which in the states is a and is becoming a lot more global over the years. Murph is a common um once a year fitness challenge that you do where you do a mile run, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups. 300 air squats oh. and then finish it with a mile run. And if you do it uh, to standard, if you do it as prescribed, you also wear a, a weighted vest. Oh my God. No. And Fox <laughs> Ride went through this whole thing where he like, he went through and he trained for it and everything else. And, and I tell you, man, he, I can't even lie. He's looking great. You looking great, man. You looking, you looking studly. <laughs> yeah. They're looking lean. And, uh, and now he's, now he's, talking, he's on Twitter talking about fasted cardio and stuff. So there's yeah. a, there's a, there's a small group of us that we, uh, he's, he's in chat ourselves. also. Yeah. I saw, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's a freaking beast I, and he's, he's like, awesome. yeah, give me, give me gym and fitness tips, please. Thanks. And I'm like, I, he probably <laughs> yeah. knows what he's doing. Yeah. He, he's over, he's over here with big neck skinny waist asking us to, uh, to give him fitness tips. <laughs> I see you Fox, bro. I see you. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. It's really nice to see, you know, people, people from the community always uh, flogging in and to chat and, you know, interacting. It's always, it's always amazing. Uh, circling back to Gwent, what was your favorite, uh, meta or deck that you ever played? Like, or, or the one that you started with maybe like, what's your, what's your favorite one? Um, I really liked second wind Skellige. 
Um, that was fun for me. Playing Hemdall out the graveyard was was fun for me. Um, nice. But that's because scale, a lot of, I know especially, like, I know that there's also some, and you, I don't need to tell you, you know this better than anybody, there's some regionality to what factions a lot of times tend to be played. At, yeah. Like, and every, everyone who's played long enough knows that at certain times of the day, based on where you are, yes. you will see, you're Different more likely things. or less likely to see things like Mill. Yeah. Um, you know, and so on. But um, I I loved that interaction of just being able to pull, like pull out Hemdall and slam them down because I started with Skellige as opposed to a lot of people in the States, you know, tend to gravitate and starting to to Nilfgaard. Mm-hmm. So me, Skellige, I was just like, I was like, control everything. <laughs> it was so much fun. I was just, you know, crushing hopes and dreams, which I guess is... Um, you know, is par for the course given my background, but, um, no, it was, that was great. And I, and I just wanted to, I, 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 I don't know if you're going to go there, but I just wanted to say my favorite card. And I think the most underrated card in the game is Terra crew plunder. Ooh, my interesting choice. Card. Nobody else gives a damn about Terra crew plunder. Yeah, I'll tell true. you what, if you check the premium card art, you've got this badass female pirate. Yeah. Who just who I, I I admit like if if she if if you're out there and you exist <laughs> I'm single all right I don't mind that you are a violent terror and a pirate all right we've seen an entire billion dollar movie franchise about pirates clearly people love pirates so now that I've sent her my message into the meta she's there and she's just she's just got this guy pinned down yeah. you know choking the hell out of him and he's reaching for this hammer because he would really like like this hand you know this hammer axe because he would really like for her to stop doing that and she's got she's over here like Gollum with the one ring <laughs> she obviously pilfered off of him and she's like, oh shiny like, yeah doesn't even care about him <laughs> no no she and she's so strong that she's just you know she's just bare handling him over here like like he's nothing and oh it's so funny and that's the kind of stuff where when i first started with gwen and i would just take a second and actually look at the card art i'm like mm-hmm. this is awesome yeah like there's a care and a love that went into this, that it wasn't just kind of like a slap together clip art, you know, uh, Google, um, uh, you know, Google Gremlin pirates and, and put something together. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, pirate images and then pull that right. And then like go to a cartoon a transformer and just drop and drag. No, there was real love and care put into this. I love it. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome choice. Interesting choice. I like when, when, yeah, when someone always chooses something different than from them, from the like standard normal cards that everybody goes for. I think, I think we also have this thing that we kind of gravitate toward like card arts that kind of, you know, give us like a certain feeling when we see it. So sure. th- those are, those are, yeah, you're thinking like, yeah, this is badass or this is awesome. Or yeah, I could, I could relate to this in some, in some way. So inter- yeah, interesting choice. Interesting choice. Nice. I, um, I think it's, I think it's great. <laughs> Incredible. Um, um, maybe a question that is kind of um, right now controversial. What do you think about the current meta? Like in your own words. So, so I'll say two things mm-hmm. um, at different levels. Overall, I appreciate um, the dev team's intent of trying to push the envelope with card interactions and and styles like Puzzle Box, for instance, things that are unique and different. Mm-hmm. I also appreciated the intent of things like Ring of Fortune trying to trying to ameliorate what we saw with, you know, essentially red coin abuse where you sit back on your hind legs and you let the player on blue coin spend more than you. And, and then, you know, Mm -hmm. you're willing to go down that one card because then you have round control to either, uh, to either bleed or in a lot of cases, it was because it was a one card finisher. I think of things like Gord, right? Mm -hmm. Gord symbiosis. The intent was to get round control regardless blue or red, just so that you could, uh, play your Gord unanswered stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate all of that intent and I appreciate them pushing the envelope. Like a lot of people, um, the 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 strategic piece, the like the mid macro, if you will, because mm-hmm. really it's technically it's you know strategic, it's tactical, strategic, organizational. But the point yep. is that once you get in game and that coin flip happens, and then you see you're on red coin, mm-hmm. and you know that your odds of winning have instantaneously dropped, yeah, um, just because of coin ironically like i said that was a problem i don't think to the same extent but that was a problem before the changes yeah it was so i mean let's not romanticize the past friends <laughs> like like there was a lot of times where you would get red you'd get blue coin and you'd be like oh man I'm yeah now 
Yeah. Um, so has the, has the, has the door swung too far the other way? Yes. Uh, I think we all accept that. I think, I don't think anybody argues that. Um, I think the, the, the thing that a lot of the community feels and that I don't disagree with is that is maybe about recognizing the need for that, for a change earlier mm -hmm. and, or implementing a change earlier, because you guys, again, the internal discussions that you all have, I think you guys are, are wildly transparent with us as much as you can be with yeah. a variety of ways that you communicate with us. But I also understand that there, there's some nuance to this where, and correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. I, I'd love to know. My assumption is that you all have more of a, on the spectrum of hands-on, hands-off, you guys tend to say, let's be a little more hands-off and see if the players adapt. Let's see if the meta happens. Because let's not forget, a year ago, there was a Northern Realms Witcher deck yeah. that played Erden and Igni. <laughs> like, we have seen hyper-control, and again, it was easier to have yeah. a hyper-control meta with something like Lockdown and with, with you know, Nilfgaard control being more playable, which it's not right now for a variety of reasons. But But the meta also hasn't necessarily shifted wholeheartedly to it like players haven't necessarily shifted all the way to adjust it's still a lot of point slam mm -hmm. as opposed to more to control and part of that is because obviously it's harder to play control into something like monster relics yeah so i'd love to really hear and i think a lot of people might like to hear your perspective mm -hmm. on you know d do you guys tend to be a little bit more hands-off and like wait and see to see if if we all adjust what's your engagement with the feedback how does that all work for you it's a it's a mix of of two things like i feel like when it comes to our design team like they don't want to be pushing anything um design related as uh, in the form of a hot fix because in this case if you, if we think about it we need to hot fix it and if we did it in the previous patch maybe it would make sense but i feel like what they told me is they they kind of want to um you know, step back a little bit and see how everything develops and what's going to be, you know, how Aaron died is going to fit into this whole thing. What about the older golden necker decks? Um, is the nerf that we had for priest is good enough or do we need to do more maybe? And just give ourselves another month in order to kind of see how everything develops and also see it a little bit more on the data side. And we also felt that, you know, from the beginning, uh, after 10.5, everybody was pretty much okay-ish until, until we kind of saw, um, like this longer message from Pyable and then others kind of jumping on it and actually saying what the, what, what they feel the problem is. And mainly, mainly like, you know, uh, pointing on, um, everything on Aaron dies. We kind of were like, okay, we feel like we're, we're seeing the problem, but let's, wait till the end of the month maybe players will find a way to kind of go around it right um because i i feel like people will say that maybe this was obvious you know from 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 the beginning you got you got you got a friend in uh in yeah. chat who uh, said that right yeah i yeah. just i just saw but uh it's not that very obvious and yeah. I feel like a lot of people in the community, like the initial reception of, of the cards was very good. And people were very happy about the abilities. We're calling them strong and, you know, the meta defining. And that was kind of the idea. Uh, but then pretty much we thought that, you know, players are smart enough. They'll find a way to go around it. Um, we'll keep on monitoring everything, looking into data and actually looking into the play rates and win rates uh, for decks that um, have air and die in them. And we saw that like mid this month, they kind of started dropping off a little bit, but it was strong, very strong in the beginning, especially you can see kind of based on whatever uh, the well-known content creators are doing, like with the decks that they're playing, that you can see it reflected in the data very quickly. If someone does a stream, plays a deck that is new, if it's like a person like Shimiri, for example, it instantly Mute. goes whoop. Muta generator. Yeah, muta generator whoop, goes yeah. all the way up, was, right? Was garbage for seven weeks and um, and found playability, and then somebody, yeah, and then it becomes part of the zeitgeist, and away you go, right? Yeah, and then now it's like ornate sensor going up because some people started playing it. So all these things, they're kind of you know mixing and and matching, and we're kind of trying to. Had, like take some time and actually you know take our hands off the wheel and letting players kind of do it and i always also feel that you know introducing changes like mid-month 
uh, that's always very tricky. It's always very tricky yeah. to do it from just like the development standpoint. Like you need to like test these things. We never like doing hot fixes for balance related stuff because if we change one thing, how it will influence the other things. There is like yeah. a live esports uh, playground scene going on here. If we change something, it will influence the qualifiers that were this month. It's like just a little bit of too many things. Maybe after the qualifiers, we could have done that. But after the qualifiers, we we're already focusing on getting thing, everything ready for the patch that is coming on Tuesday next week. So, you know, it's 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 a lot of moving pieces on the development side where we want to kind of, you know, uh, like hold our horses when it comes to stuff like that. Of course, if we saw that, you know, the play rates and the win rates were just, just crazy and this was getting out of control, then we would do it. Like there were a couple instances where we actually had to like halt uh, everything and hotfix, uh, you know, balance related stuff. So for this one, we kind and of I wanted think, to to wait a little bit. And I think from what you're describing, um, so the so two two things I think I'd call out. One is uh, Phantom Mag uh, put a comment that I I stand by 100 percent because I've I've done this in real life. Um, the the things that have to happen for certain changes that you all know are going to have third, fourth, eighth order effects and be super down trace. There's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. There's the actual structural development piece of like doing the card redesign and the, and the coding and all of that, which, you know, can, can be a very small resource investment. Sure. But then there's the initial internal testing. I'm sure that you guys have, yeah. the, I know that you guys have the, the player client, the testing client that mm -hmm. you all have. There's that layer of testing then there's then there's maybe a wider testing or an engagement that you might float in maybe in like the partner space to be like hey like if if you know if this happens what does that look like there's a lot of downtrace effects the worst thing i'm imagining that you all would want to do would be to introduce a change and then have that change cascade oh, in Most some kind of unseen way where someone yeah. fought, which has happened before where someone finds a one off that breaks everything mm -hmm. and then you're like you know good good lord now the other thing i'll say is that what and, and my my specific critique would be the reason why i love gwent is because of the sh the the strategy and the nuance mm -hmm. the fact that and i loved and that's why i loved the building decks around bronzes kind of metas <clears throat> where which is why i like great sword which is where you got an opportunity to say like hey i'm going to take some bronzes and my my gold's I don't want to say they're going to supplement, but my my the interaction of my bronzes and golds is going to lead to great things. Mm -hmm. um, I liked playing old self wound. Yeah, back when you know I would go in and, and you know you'd have you you'd and dr with Draco Turtle and you'd be playing stuff like that and you'd play your your druids off of that and you'd have Getty for the points. But yeah, like stuff like that was and the marjorams on armor like the intent was to build up armor and stuff. Good that old times. Like, <laughs> yeah, like and so that's where I think the a lot of the frustration also comes from uh, even below the the top, you know, the top 500 tops, you know, anywhere from the top 500, top 64, whatever delimiter you want to do from that pro level to casual players who also like to play, play the game with some frequency. I think is we feel like there's been some of that lost because between Erendite and coin and the coin abuse now being on mm -hmm. the blue side, the point slam, and then, you know, Necker, you know, being able to to play Golden Necker and and throw thirty plus points out in a in a single turn, without the kind of deliberate setup that we used to have to go through. Yeah, you think about the most the most uh, overtune, the, not overtune, the most the most points that you'd ever get out of anything back uh, in the day was assimilate. Yeah, right. Yeah, the, the, there the was. creed was never go into a long round with assimilate. Yeah, like a long round three with assimilate's a bad day. Um, but that also took setup. It took turns of whether you're playing portal or you're to get your bronzes out, your assimilate bronze engine and stuff. There's all this work that you had to do. And so maybe that's something that I think a lot of people would like to hear about is, you know, do you all have a sense of, of what that looks like or in terms of getting back to that place and rebalancing maybe the triangle between engines point slam control or, or what's your, your long-term take on, um, on what we're going to be seeing going forward without maybe revealing uh too much with what's coming up yeah it's pretty much a good question for 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 the balancing more than for me but pretty much i feel like what we want to do especially like with the next update is to rebalance some stuff but also bring some stuff up uh in terms of like archetypes that i feel like feel like they 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 are not getting enough um love right now 
So make them a little bit stronger while fine tuning the things which are kind of, you know, uh, running rampant still after, after everything that was introduced with Forgotten Treasure. So like tuning that stuff um, and then focusing on, on other things and also maybe doing some stuff for more of the swarmy decks and also in the future looking more into decks that focus on devotion and going that way is kind of the direction that we want to kind of be bringing it back so people don't have this you know uh you know thing to to saying that oh they only care about now neutrals and faction identity is gone because of this like we're aware of people saying that so we want to kind of bring it out you know the other way or in this case yeah and, without and spoiling point, anything <laughs> let's also not romanticize the fact that a year and a half two years ago there were certain matchups, not just archetype, but faction matchups where you'd be like, you'd go into it, you'd be like, I have a very, uh, like, I do not have a good chance of winning. Yeah. Um, just because of a certain, you know, particularly a certain faction. And then obviously over time, we've kind of narrowed more to an archetype. Control Nilfgaard into Skellige Self Wound. Yeah. Skellige Self Wound's going to have a bad day. Between <laughs> the, manipulation, yeah. the ability to seize and, and take your, and play your cards, graveyard hate. That's a bad day. Yeah. Um, and I think that from a design perspective, I would imagine you guys are okay with that. Um, the community for the most, you know, is okay with that. Like it is what it is. That's what yeah. happens. It's the random roll of ladder. Um, but yeah, I just, I think that that ability to feel like I, I'm playing a faction that has a specific identity an archetype that that's has an fun. identity that's trying to do a thing. That's, that's what we love. And particularly yeah. for me, I love, I love that, that setup and feeling their payoff. That's the yeah. word I was grasping for the payoff of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like I did it. I did the thing. The thing is good. The thing is done, you know? Yeah, I also kind of like to gravitate toward a specific faction, in this case, Scoia'tael. And I don't want my Scoia'tael deck just be filled with all the good cards, which are a little bit overtuned in a given meta. I just want to more, you know, have its own kind of identity. And I also uh, agree a little bit with what you said, that you want a little bit of more setup instead of just having one card that can, you know, pretty much give you a lot of points instead of just actually have have this whole thing where you you know you set up your engines you then do other stuff you tutor for things and everything starts rolling out you know in a in a manner where also your opponent has the ability to counter these things and you know have an answer for them of course it sucks for you if they answer your stuff but still i mean yeah. this is why we play card games because sometimes yeah, we, we can sneak games. it in we can sneak it in or if you're a control player you play control because you want to be in control of the match and then see if you're able to stop you know what's what's going to happen 100 percent, and that's i think that's all that anybody wants is to feel like feel like going in they have there's a line that they can take to win to win the the matchup and that they feel like um and they feel like an archetype that that the arch that there's enough both variety between the archetypes and there's enough competition between the archetypes that you don't have to be locked into playing only a handful of decks to compete. Yeah. I think that and, and obviously turn I'm not speaking about tournament. This is, you know, ladder and, and people playing in general, yeah. like, you know, um, but um because tournaments are obviously totally different. But yeah, it's to feel like they have agency. Um, yeah. And that's great. It's great to hear you say that. And and again, I'm I'm I I take the benevolent view here. <laughs> I imagine the devs feel the same way. Yes. Um, yeah. And there's yeah. it's okay to misstep and it's okay to miss the mark on some stuff. That's fine. Like you know that's why I feel like you know burning him at the stake for it. It just feels a little bit over much. Yeah. I mean you know, we make mistakes. Like much. you know there are metas where players are happy. There are things uh, when we drop cards, players are are more or less happy. But there are moments where. On the balance side, we sometimes, you know, feel like we get stuff out of out of hand. It was it was interesting because I was even talking the other day with Vlad, and he was, you know, we we talk weekly uh, where we just sit down for an hour and just discuss stuff, and we we're talking about the current meta, and we're kind of like thinking, is there anything that we could have done in a different way when it comes to communication, when it comes to, um, you know, maybe highlighting more to 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 the other team members that you know there's a problem and we need to adjust on the go, and we all kind of, you know, we all uh, like both of us said like. Could we really like, or sh or did we do enough in yeah. this case? Like, and it's always and it's always this thing when you're kind of doubting yourself because you're seeing the negativity from the community, and you kind of know that you know we've also saw that there is a problem and we need to like adjust it, but we don't want to adjust things on the go when it comes to balance because it just makes everything fall out of place once again. 
And we know that we tested this multiple times. We tested this with, you know, like community, community members also. Um, so this is not something that was stuck, you know, that we just, you know, tested ourselves and people think the balance team is just Jean playing the game where there's multiple, <laughs> like, you know, uh, designers that are responsible for this. Plus there's, there's a pool of, of, of community members that are playing the game, um, on a, on a closed PTR and, you know, they're kind of given their feedback, like none of these things were, were slipping through the cracks in between patches. So we're like, okay, maybe we should continue the way it is, sure. see how it develops. If it gets out of hand and it kind of did, we're going to need to adjust it in the next update. Right. So that's kind and of then, the, and then like you said, also the tensions with, you've got the, you've got the, the qualifiers and the top yeah. 16 and stuff like, then there's that. It's like how much, then how much lift and shift do you want to do 14 days before 21 days before those events as well? I, I and again, I think we've, I think we've, you know, we peeled the onion enough on this. So I, I'm, <laughs> and I'm sure, I'm sure everyone has, has an opinion and also everybody is probably tired of hearing the circular yeah. about it. But the, uh, the knock on wood is that uh, come Tuesday, we've got something shiny and fun. And I know that yeah. you guys have got some stuff planned for us. So looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, there's some unexpected stuff also in this patch. So I hope, I hope that uh, we kind of, you know, uh, have a little bit of redemption time uh, from the, from the community and people say oh, like, okay, okay, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe this is, you know, this is, this is the right way to go. So um, I'm, looking, I'm looking at Tris butterflies. I yeah. Mean, I, I mean, I, I'm, that, yeah, that's a good start for me. Anything I, I know some people are going to be like, oh my God, it's a neutral. Yeah. All right. Like move on because yeah. it's it's great it's great to see cards that maybe haven't seen play in a long time either get a rework or a function that allows us to play to open doors and other archetypes so i'm looking forward to it yeah likewise um there were a couple of things that you wanted to talk about um that kind of separates i think when from from other card games um yeah there were some ideas about decision making uh especially like looking into new players and stuff like that i see like you're very into like theories uh, and like and being being strategic about things, and maybe it comes from the from the military background, like you highlighted. So, uh, what do you enjoy when it comes to like um, decision making and kind of how you play Gwent yourself? So I. Uh... Let me see. Baron Baron couldn't even type it fast enough. Uh, <laughs> we love we love the Baron Grimswald. Um, so Rune Mage is uh, is an awesome card. Yeah, that is such a great card design. I couldn't like got lost in the sauce of all this with Forgotten Treasure for some people. Uh, maybe that Rune Mage is awesome. Uh, and I know that Shinmiri the last uh, week and a half or so has been playing a a Shoop uh, Radea Rune Mage deck exactly yeah. for that reason. Mm -hmm. Um. It's just, it's so great. And I'm also, I've got some stuff in the bag uh, here for the, the next uh, week or so uh, leading up to Tuesday, some Skellige Rune Mage, some Ooh. some good casino stuff. So it'll nice. be fun to, to play that. But um, yeah, the, the thing I think that's that's surprising to me, listening to a lot of streamers, engaging with, with people in my chat, is a lot of the biases mm -hmm. and the fallacies that kind of, the logic fallacies that carry over across uh competitive games uh -huh. and particularly card That's games and I, I also come from a background of of playing competitive poker um and Ooh, so nice we see that we see that a lot gambler's fallacy right uh -huh. um, the tendency to believe that future probabilities are somehow impacted by past events yeah uh how many of us have said i never find siege yes right like <laughs> it's the common thing siege or or the uh siege is the hardest scenario to find yeah um of course, I like, and I, I know that most of us know that we're joking, but um, it's, it's, it's obviously nonsense, right? Yeah. Like, that's, like, like empirically, that's that's impossible. But it is a, it's a, it's part of the fallacy structure, outcome bias. Mm -hmm. Um, the idea that a decision, that we judge a decision by its outcome instead of the inputs that got us there. Mm -hmm. So people will say like, and I, and I do this too, by the way, I'm not immune to this, but I'm like saying <laughs> talking about missing cards. Yeah. Well, I mean, 90, if you play a hundred games and you play, you can play priestess. Yeah. Priestess is the perfect example of this. If you play a priestess deck and your opponent does not manipulate your deck, 98 out of a hundred games, you will find all of your cards exactly as intended because that's how the deck is built. Yeah. You sacrifice some of the, uh, you know, and, and you can build any deck like that. If we look at tournaments, um, a lot of the players uh, last weekend that brought cell phone decks um, made some small tweaks to the more meta cell phone deck and added Ermion yeah. to make sure that they could tutor the Sigdrifa's right or be exactly. able to get that Marjoram out for, for uh, Sigvald. Because in a tournament setting, 
you're willing to, in a lot of instances, you're willing to lower your potential point ceiling while also reducing your RNG. And so you add that consistency. Uh, yeah. So one of the fallacies the that I think is, is that Gwent has enough tutors across all the factions, uh, plus the neutrals that you could guarantee not to miss your cards if you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. You have agency over that. You have yeah. control over that in the deck builder. Um, so if you start there, you've got a really good opportunity to hit all your cards. The trade-off is you're not going to have as much juice as somebody else. Yeah. Syndicate decks historically are a great example of this. Um, the current King of Beggars meta um, syndicate deck right now has one tutor. Mm -hmm. King of Beggars generally doesn't thin yeah. until round three, so yeah. it doesn't really count. It's got bank. <laughs> so you're playing Vivaldi bank, and then you're just kind of hoping everything else works exactly. out. But if it works, you got a lot of juice. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and Baron just said, and then you sacrifice, sacrifice power. power. And that's, yeah. And that's what Sometimes you have to for the utility, right? And that's the trade-off. And what happens, another bias that people then stumble into as a result is insensitivity to sample size. Yeah. They'll play, you can play three games with a deck and know that it's not going to work. Yeah. But if you play five games uh, with a deck and you estimate that your deck is really more of a red coin deck, four of your games were on blue coin. Yeah. And you missed cards in three of your games that you wanted for your strategy to execute. How could you possibly know if the deck's functioning? Exactly. So there's a lot of these things where I think- Not a big sample players, size. Yeah. You need to have a bigger sample size to yeah. be able to to really make an inference. So the 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 thing that I would highlight, whether you're a casual player in rank 25, just hanging out, having a good time, whether you're a pro player, is getting to understand a little bit more the mental piece so that you can have more fun. Yeah. The game is more fun when you don't feel like the cards are stacked against you, not because mathematically they are, but because you're making a judgment call where you're like, oh, you know, this, this game is nonsense. Like, you know, whatever. It's like, well, yeah. well, how many tutors do you have? How much thinning do you do? Well, I don't, I don't care about any of that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. Like, the, the, what do you expect? Enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or, or the execution that you need in order for your strategy to go off in the, in the macro is you need four cards to be played in succession in that order uninterrupted. Yeah. Good luck with that. Good luck. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, there's, um, there's, there's a lot of that stuff that happens. I mean, the military, we call it the military decision-making process. MDMP is a very deliberate thing, and that's carried over for me to playing Gwent, where I make some very quick situational assessments. I go, okay, like, do I need to, as soon as the cards come out uh, round one, I say, I get my hand draw. I say, do I need to win round one against this deck? Do I need last say? No. Yeah. Do I need to bleed you? And if you can, in your mind, if you can kind of structure things to make certain decisions, you just kind of like walk the dog on those things. You have a lot of time. You have a lot of fun with it and yeah. it makes it a lot more fun. And then if you lose, you go, okay, yeah, like that sucked. Yeah. Uh, we play to win. <laughs> we play to win the game, but it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. If you don't, if you, it's okay. How that goes. Yeah. I mean, you need to look pretty much at the cards they have in the beginning and you can tell by like round one, like what should I commit? What should I not commit? And if, if it's, if this is like the moment to kind of, okay, maybe I'll have a weaker round one, but I can bounce back round two and three. If I thin, if I tutor for the stuff that I need later on, that's possible. But you know, if I go in all in guns blazing and there's a lot of players that just go in round one and pretty much execute everything they learn from like a YouTube video. Uh, that's very quickly, you know, gets you, gets you into trouble because there are things that you're not expecting and you're not, um, right. instead of you're just, I feel like sometimes us card game players, I also, uh, do this mistake a, a lot of times is that we keep on repeating the same old, same uh -huh. old strategy instead of adapting on live kind of to what's going on to what our opponent is doing right and sometimes 100%. if we if something does you know happens in a way that we do not expect it we're kind of like uh, what should i do now should i be continuing with my strategy should i be adapting to this or then like sometimes it's just too late like if you don't react at a given moment out yep and that's where the you're exactly right burza and that's where things like outcome bias yeah um is is the out was the outcome of this game solely decided by RNG by random chance yeah. or was the outcome of this or could I have influenced the outcome of the game? In the micro, it's the decisions you make in the game. In the macro, like I said, it's in the deck builder. Yeah. Like, did I to your point? Did I start from a position where I was in a no win situation? To my Star Trek fan, fans out there, was I in a Kobayashi Maru from day one? <laughs> like before I ever before I ever click the play button. Uh, from the start screen, like, did I, was I not in a position to be successful to your point, unless all of these things happen exactly as prescribed in yeah. the deck guide. Um, and 
Um, and Gonzalo uh, made a point in chat about like saying missing, I miss playing Flying Redanian. Yeah, that's the trade-off that the current meta has had to make. And this gets back to, this circles all the way back to the beginning uh, about some of the changes a lot of us are hoping for, myself included. You, ha you, can't, you can't really feel like you're going to be able to compete with in, in, especially in pro rank and in the top 500 against the power of other decks by playing yeah. something like Flying Redanian. You love to have that thinning. You love to have that consistency, that extra three points maybe on the back end in, in a round or two after round one. But you need that, you need those provisions so you can play that top end and that you can go ahead and, and, and compete with the power. Yeah. So that's, that's where it's at. But at the end of the day, again, it's about having fun. And if you can reorient yourself mentally, if you can think through those biases and a lot of us, and I say this from personal experience, it comes from a position of, of shame. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to feel ashamed or embarrassed streamers, <laughs> especially in content creators. You don't want to feel ashamed of losing. Yeah. You don't want to feel embarrassed by losing. It's okay. It's fine. It's, it's totally all right. fine. We're yeah. going to be okay. You and me together, we're going to be all right. <laughs> um, so, and that's not to minimize that like these things aren't important and they don't matter. It's just to say that like, if you think about it in those ways and you don't get caught up in those biases and those fallacies and those traps, you're going to enjoy the game more. You're going to know when it was you and you're going to know when you lost from the get. And that makes it a little bit yeah. easier to stomach. Yeah, and I feel like having this perspective of kind of, I think it applies to everything in life. You sometimes need to be kind of like jumping out and kind of hovering over yourself and seeing like, should I be really worried about this? Is this really, could I like really, does this really need to like influence me? And I, I, I get it myself. I sometimes get like steamed mad that something happens or something that, you know, I didn't foresee within the game or uh, the mistakes I made, or sometimes I just play good, but I got, you know, I got a bad uh, draw. And I also feel that, you know, whenever I'm playing on, on stream, sometimes that I should be performing a little bit better. But that was kind of in the like in the beginning when I was streaming and I was playing Gwen, I, I felt like people had like higher expectations in terms of like, oh, he works on the game. He should be like, you know, a god. Well, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Totally doesn't yeah. work that way. I mean, maybe if I played... Wouldn't that be uh, nice? Yeah, maybe if I played as much as uh, the, the pro players, maybe that would be possible. But, you know, we've seen screenshots as proof as people going against the pro rank, against some of the, you know, the best players and winning against them. And, and it happens. And it's sometimes it's just bad draws. Sometimes it's just bad decision making. Sometimes it's just testing different things uh, in your deck because I feel like, 100%. yeah, if you're if you're a card game player, you will be testing new cards and kind of fine tuning things. You, you I mean, you can net deck stuff, but very quickly from like the net decking process, uh, which is very easy, just copy paste and play it and test it, test it, test it, test it. You will actually come to a conclusion that, okay, maybe I can swap some cards. Maybe I can adjust this if I move that. You know, it's gonna be more fun, and I think you'll find fine tune the deck to like your play style and also what you want from it, right? Hundred percent, and that's where the, you know, the taking the if you can take as much of that frustration out, but also if yeah. you can take solace in the fact, like I said about that outcome bias, and you can be like, I did everything I had agency over to play as well as I think I could, or conversely, you know, there's a couple of missteps in there. It wouldn't I lost by twenty, but had I. Yeah. Had I done these four or five different things, I would have lost by three. Yeah. And that, and then I would have maximized my plays. And that tells me that I'm getting, um, I'm being as good as I can at this game and I'm having fun doing it. Yeah. Hello, hello, little friend. That's hello, Gerald. Hello. Yeah. Hello. He, he, he's stretching right now because he was sleeping in that corner. <laughs> my, uh, my animals are strewn about, uh, my plays because it's, uh, it's nap time at the moment, as you would expect yeah. here. I'm uh, midday. So they're, they're, uh, they're all lounging. He just One thing finished his wanna, nap. <laughs> uh, in the in the in the uh, in the vein of uh, of asking you for things as we come on yeah. this week in Gwen, I wanted to keep the tradition going. Um, myself, uh, Baron, uh, a couple other people in mm -hmm. my chat. We've um, we've talked about this for a while. Is there ever a universe <laughs> where we would be able to go, uh, where we'd be able to play friendly friendlies and be able to select? from like a drop down of the different seasonal formats to play yeah. from. That's an interesting one. I, that's the first one I've, I've heard, to be honest. That would be the, we were talking about this, like how much fun would it be if you were like, all right, guys, we're going to go in the debt, like, you know, hey, Baron, I'm going to play you one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have some that fun. That would be amazing. Or, 
that would be amazing and, and be like we're gonna do we're gonna do entrench or we're gonna do uh you know we're gonna swap hands every other hand let's see how wild stuff can get actually, that would make that'd be so much fun. i'm actually adding that to my to my list of stuff that would be really that would be really cool like you know like doing a friend match and then choosing the type of season also everybody's playing on the same same field uh that's um, that's really cool because there's a lot of people that that a lot of us have talked and it's come up a lot in my chat that a lot of us uh moshcraft i think has even said it uh, a couple of times when he's talked about it on uh on his stream there's a lot of us who would love just playing friendlies with each other and like seeing seeing what kind of weird interactions and fun stuff and decks we can build beyond ladder and we yeah. can stream it you know we'd content create off of it we'd have a hell of a good time yeah. with it so yeah you can you can create a lot of content yeah out of that that's a cool I mean, one. being able to I, I'm not gonna lie. I would really love the opportunity to be able to to uh, to use uh, Vilg Renegade to be able to make like 15 15 Sianas and then click them all in the same turn. Oh, uh, I'm just saying that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. Also, I just agree. Like, if you as a streamer, if you're only limited to playing pretty much like the seasonal within a given month, and which is I feel like is not very popular. Like the majority of content creators and streamers kind of go through. Uh, the fine-tuned decks and just playing, you know, normal ladder or ranked, and then or if you're pro ladder, then 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 playing over there. That's kind of the the, the avenue that they go through. Like this is this is what kind of will give me the most viewers right. because people are always searching for the, you know, for the best deck and for the yeah to be competitive. And I think uh, Gwen kind of in the way that it is, kind of pushes you to to go towards the the competitive side. But if we maybe had you know uh different options when it comes to like you know especially if you're part of a team and you have other content creators like it's just all of you having fun and creating content off of that that's that's exactly the thought process and in fact we're uh we're actually working right now through the nuts and bolts of um being able to do a community tournament uh with the starter decks mm -hmm. so the intent would be that you would bring a starter deck and we're working out kind of like how many provisions need to be left over yeah. Um, and you can maybe, uh, add one gold and swap out two bronzes kind of thing. Like we're figuring out the, the, the puts and takes, um, to make sure that it, it, it functions, but stuff like that where, because yeah. we think it'd be really accessible, but we also think it'd be really fun to watch, you know, top tier players, you know, streamers, content creators, try and negotiate decks where you have to play. I don't know, wolf pack. <laughs> you know, we just think it'd be really funny. Um, so that's the kind of stuff where we, we'd love to be able to leverage, um, you know, everything, all the content you guys, uh, the, in terms of development, all the content mm -hmm. you guys have already made to have a lot of fun. Yeah. That's really cool. Oh uh, yeah. I'll, I, I, I noted that down. So I'm keeping, I'm keeping that idea. I'll pass it on to the, to the rest of the team because I feel like, yeah, yeah that would be, awesome. that, would, that would be really cool. And I think maybe it shouldn't be that difficult on the implementation side, but I want to be, I don't want to be like jumping onto, you know, someone else's work, but we'll see what they, what they say, but, um, hey, you, it's an you, interesting you one. Let them you let them know that if Nick, if if it helps next month, I am happy to make the only option for my donation stream, uh, the feed the CDPR Debs Foundation. Uh, I know that the I know that the feed the Debs Foundation is a is a is an important <laughs> one, and we are happy to donate to that cause. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Well said. Oh man, this is such a good conversation, but we're over an hour and I always try to keep these into yes, an hour. Yes. So I'm, I'm probably going to need to have you back once again, uh, for another one, uh, it was really a pleasure to talk to you, man. And, uh, yeah, it just, it just felt like the conversation could go on naturally for hours and hours on end. Um, and then we jump on your bike, right? Then yeah. We gotta, then we got to take me on a hundred K, uh, <laughs> bike tour and then, uh, and then my legs lock up so I can't sit down. <laughs> that's, that's kind of, no, actually. Yeah. That would be, that would be interesting. Like having like one episode when it's just, you know, riding the bike and talking. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen, but on social media, there's a guy who does, um, he does like TikToks and short videos of him taking work calls and he's got a green screen behind him and he's on his bicycle, but like biking through the city. Oh, really? He, I need to check and, that and out. The background looks like an office and in my mind now i just imagine burza being on a call like with your internal team being like yeah i think we're gonna make those changes <laughs> and, and nobody realizes that you know you're yeah. coming around the corner of the you know the shang z so that'd be funny and but the and the, and the air like <laughs> yep air whipping in the wind I love yeah it. totally not not outside totally not outside like <laughs> yeah, i'm in my house yes i promise why no, are you awesome. shouting <laughs> <laughs> i love it well, yeah. again, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Burza, for having me. Uh, it's been great. Um, love to see it. And Where can uh, people find can... you? Last one. Probably the people uh, in yes. chat can find you easily. But if not, where can people find you? 
Uh, friends can find me at twitch.tv slash the underscore salty captain. Um, you can find me there. Um, I only do Gwent stuff on Twitter was the only reason I revived my uh, Twitter account long nice. ago. Um, I do some stuff on YouTube, but mostly that's for people who like to enjoy YouTube from that medium. Um, I don't do any ads or any of that stuff because I think YouTube scalps enough money from the rest of us. So yes, uh, the underscore salty captain. Uh, come find me if you guys would like to hang out. And uh, yes, and also... If you're interested, uh, I'm also a journeyman blacksmith and uh, knife maker. Ooh. So if you're interested, um, you can find the links on my to my Instagram uh, for my knife making, blacksmithing, metalworking, and all that. And we're going to be doing a blacksmithing stream coming up here soon as well. So well, yeah, man, let me know when that one's happening because I've always been into you know s s pounding on metal and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Like like w welding is one of the first things that I learned after like uh, yeah. university and stuff like that because I just wanted to you know um just have the skill like you know melting metal metal together and stuff like that so I'm telling, there, highly there, respect that you know skill there's something there's something fun about taking a piece of metal heating it to 2000 degrees and hitting it with a hammer in a semi state until it turns into a knife i'm just saying it's a hell of a good time amen 10 out of That's 10 awesome well again thank you thank you so much uh thank you chat uh you're a bunch of wholesome degenerates i love you um, exactly you guys know that we do and we look forward to um to shaking up uh to the shake up of the meta on tuesday next week uh and in the meantime thanks again burrs appreciate you man thank you thank you for coming on and thank you for reaching out to me to, to be on this episode was amazing was really 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 like once again it was really awesome to talk to you uh people are already saying that we we need a podcast like we need to do a podcast like 10 out of 10 we could talk for days <laughs> i can me 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 swinging a hammer you riding a bike it wouldn't be weird at all yeah so 10 out of 10 we could do it easy awesome man i love it take Thanks, care everyone. have, have a good day, one all. and yeah catch you all later next week Bye-bye.